Good evening and welcome everyone. Uh, before we begin the proceedings of our board meeting this evening, I'd like to highlight our safety protocols and expectations. Due to CDC guidance placing Kent County in the substantial risk category for transmission of the COVID-19 Delta variant, we are requiring masks indoors for anyone on the grounds of GRPS property for all students, staff, and visitors, regardless of vaccination status. If you need a mask, these are available at both entrances. Public comment cards and meeting agendas are located on the tables within the board chambers at both entrances. Once you fill out a comment card, please submit that in the drop box next to the comment cards. Our board assistant will collect those cards when I call for public comment and deliver them to our board secretary, Ms. Lewis. I will call on each individual one at a time to address the board at the presentation table. On behalf of our superintendent, Dr. Ledrian Roby, and the Board of Education, thank you for being here in attendance with us this evening. So with that, I will call this meeting of the Grand Rapids Public Schools Board of Education to order. Today is Tuesday, September 7th. Will you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Ms. Lewis, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Williams? Present. Dr. Baker? Here. Ms. Davis? Is excused. Dr. Flores? Present. Ms. Grant? Present. Ms. Lewis is here. Reverend Matias? Present. Mr. Ross? Present. Ms. Jackie? I'm here. Thank you very much. May I please have a motion for approval of the agenda? So moved. Support. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, we have two celebrations this evening and I will hand it over to Dr. Roby to introduce those. Good evening, everyone. Um, our first celebration is the introduction of our new administrative leaders in our organization. Some of them are coming from outside of the district and some of them have been grown, homegrown. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Gorman as he introduces all of these wonderful, bright leaders. All right, so. Uh, thank you, President Schottke, Superintendent Dr. Roby, distinguished board members. This is really a, a wonderful evening uh, tonight where we can introduce, as Dr. Roby said, folks who have been with the district for quite some time and moving into new roles, and then some new friends uh, from other school districts. So let me start off. I'm going to introduce uh, the, the principal and then the principal's executive director. So first up, Amarena Nelson, will you please stand? This is Amarena Nelson. She is the new principal at Burton Elementary. Her executive director is Dr. Maida Gunnell. Uh, Amarena previously served as a school improvement facilitator at Alger Middle School, as well as she was a member of our professional development team. And uh, she spent some time as a teacher in the Baltimore City Schools. So please welcome Amarena Nelson. <laughs> Next up is Tracy Mann. Tracy, please stand. Tracy's been a teacher in GRPS since 1998. She has taught at Franklin Elementary uh, and Buchanan, and she has been a second grade teacher in her previous role. She's now the assistant principal at Burton Elementary. Please welcome Ms. Tracy Mann. <laughs> and Dr. Maida Gunnell is also her executive director. Uh, we will come back, uh, Matthew, we'll come back. Uh, next up, we have uh, Chad Nielsen. Chad, please stand. Chad is a former GRPS teacher. He's also the former school improvement facilitator at Harrison Park, working with Donna Bowman and Troy Wilbon. He is now the principal of Kent Hills. Please welcome Chad Nielsen. <laughs> and Bridget Cheney, please stand. Bridget Cheney is, uh, is Chad's executive director. Please clap it up, absolutely. <laughs> okay, next up we have uh, Nathaniel Moody. Please stand. Former GRPS teacher. Dean at Creston, Union, and Ottawa Hills, and recently the assistant principal at Alger Middle School. He is now the principal at Riverside. So he's worked about just every school. Now he's the principal at Riverside. And Dr. Carl Nelson is his executive director. <laughs> Next up, we have Dr. Jason McGee. Uh, Jason McGee and I start off at Creston together, Polar Bears. Uh, he was AP at Central, and most recently the principal at Coit. 
Again, he's now the principal at Innovation Central, and his executive director is Mr. Rodney Lewis. Please welcome Dr. Jason McGee. <laughs> Next up, we have Mr. Jerry Aguilar. Jerry, please stand. Jerry's a former dean at Union, uh, then took a year to be the SEL behavior consultant, and we're happy to have him back at Union High School. Dean of Students, Mr. Jerry Aguilar. Executive Director, Mr. Rodney Lewis. Okay. Next up, we have uh, Ms. Laura McLeod. She is a special, our Special Education Director. She is a former GRPS teacher, a teacher consultant, and a Special Education Supervisor, and her Executive Director is Tony Moore. Okay, next up, uh, we have Ms. Ann Jackson. Uh, another Creston Polar Bear, uh, special education supervisor, GRPS teacher, former teacher consultant, and again, her executive director is Ms. Tony Moore. <laughs> that is all we have for now, Dr. Roby. Uh, just please welcome our team, everybody. This is a strong group of administrators who will lead this district in the right direction. Thank you. concur with Dr. Gorman. I've had an opportunity to talk with almost everyone and um, be a part of the interview process and they are strong leaders, um, have a strong vision of the work that they are doing and wanting to lift up student voice and, and experiences for all. So congratulations to all of you. We look forward to the work that you're going to do in the future. Our second celebration, I'm going to ask Dr. Gunnell to come forward. She is going to talk to us about National Hair National Hispanic Heritage Month, and this is the time for the next 30 days from September 15th through October 14th that we lift up the acknowledgments of um, our Latino and Hispanic folks of, of, of descent around their culture and language and community and the things that they um, bring to help enrich our community um, here in Grand Rapids and also across our nation. So Dr. Gunnell, I'm gonna let you take it away. Good evening, Dr. Roby, President Schottke, and board members. I am here to let you know about our forthcoming Hispanic Heritage Celebration. But before I begin, I want to preface it by saying that according to the most recent census, approximately 61 million people, or 18% of the U.S. population, are of Hispanic or Latino origin, including myself. As time goes on, more Hispanic people have been born in the U.S than those who immigrated here. So with that said, I'm now gonna talk about the celebration that we're gonna have here in Grand Rapids. Hispanic heritage, a celebration of Latin culture. Although we celebrate and learn about cultures through our curriculum all year long, we observe, as Dr. Roby said, National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th. We celebrate the histories, cultures, and contributions of citizens whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. This year, we are for fortunate to have renowned author Diana Lopez and local artist Eric Picardo. They're going to provide interactive presentations face-to-face -face in person to our GRPS students. In addition, staff have received additional resources and lesson plans to inc incorporate into their daily plans. One of the books that uh, Diana Lopez wrote is Confetti Girl. And she has another book that the students will also get. And the book is about Selena Quintillana. And she, that's a new book. I don't have it right now, but once the books come in, you'll each get copies of the two books that the students are gonna get. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will move on to public comment for any board agenda items. I see Julie checking just a moment.
Not agenda, okay, very good. All right, so we have no public comment for agenda items, so we'll move on to our reports this evening. First is our secretary's report, Ms. Lewis. Yes, um, this is just a reminder for the board that the Kent Intermediate Association of School Boards will be holding a dinner meeting on Wednesday, October 13th, beginning at 6 p.m. at the new Southwest Community Campus Middle High School. And Dr. Tammy Campbell, Diversity and Equity and Student Success, will be there as the guest speaker. So I would really encourage some of us to go because uh, uh, this is the intermediate board that I serve on and I would like to see some of my friends there. So, um, and a communication will be coming from the superintendent's office once all the details are finalized and an RSVP will be required. Kathy, thank you for sending our regrets on a regular basis. <laughs> regrets? <laughs> Did you say regrets? <laughs> we regret to be able to. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't you no. Don't send your regrets. You just talk about us bad. I'm good. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ms. Lewis. We'll move on to our committee chair updates. We have three this evening. First is the Academic Achievement Committee. Ms. Davis is excused, so Mr. Ross, I understand you'll provide an update. Yes. Um, um, we had a, a academic, academic achievement uh, last week on the 7th. Um, we had a, a update, a brief update from the Instructional Council. Uh, Instructional Council hasn't met yet, obviously early in the school year, so, so we didn't get a, a lot of information. But uh, one thing just knowing forward, this year is the year that GRA, uh, GRA um, chairs the Academic Achievement, um, the Instructional Council, excuse me, they rotate. So this year is um, led by GRA, so all the updates will be from GRA. But of course, um, our administrative staff is always present and whatnot as well. But so the update was really just brief because they hadn't met yet this year. Uh, also got an update about the first days of school. Um, our central office staff were assigned to various buildings to support um, uh, building leadership throughout the district. So um, you know, all in all, um, staff and students appeared to be pretty excited to be back in person. Um, and uh, Mel Atkins did give us also an update on social emotional learning. Um, we do have a, a new director of behavioral health and social emotional learning who was hired in July. I don't think we haven't met him yet. He wasn't was unable to be present last week, but Mr. Jamal Fisher. Don't think he's here tonight, is he? Probably not. No. Nope. Um, but yeah, so uh, along with that update, though, uh, aside from Mr. Fisher, we're also beginning to embark upon some new work with the uh, Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. CASEL is their acronym for short. It's an uh, uh, organization out of Chicago, I believe it is. But we're exploring exploration with them to uh, get some guidance in building foundational support and planning around our district-wide um, social emotional learning um, goals. Um, they're also going to help encourage social emotional learning for students in general while supporting and strengthening adult competencies in social emotional learning. Um, another thing they'll be helping us with is learning to use uh, SEL as a, a lever for equity. So I'm um, just kind of raising our awareness and, and advancing our equity goals um, by leveraging social emotional learning. And uh, we are looking to design or have a curriculum designed of sorts um, for SEL. Uh, with some guidance for Castle in time for um, our next uh, school year. And um, we also got a report on K-8 electives by Maggie Malone and Kurt Johnson, um, particularly with art, PE, and music. Um, all students are able to have some combination of that. Uh, some buildings offer Spanish and technology based on you know specifics for their school, for example, IB, uh, K-5, or K building that may determine um, what is offered. Of course, administrators at school buildings, depending on um, the uh, feedback that they get and the direction they want to take their building, they can request other um, electives in their building, you know, depending on student interests and things like that as well. But again, uh, RP and music, uh, depending on the building, but everyone has an opportunity to take some combination of those. The visual arts piece is a combination of different mediums, uh, ceramics, paint, printmaking, things of that nature. Um, there's a some equipment that I'm super not familiar with is called kilns, K-I-L-N-S. It's, uh, I guess, kind of baking, not baking, but, you know, a heating mechanism or whatnot. So make some efforts to kind of make those available district-wide. Right now, they are not. But again, going back to the conversation of equity, um, that's one of the things that, that did come up. And as far as phys ed, our students are learning about health, nutrition, self-expression, teamwork, and uh, local motor skills. And again, these were all electives for um, K-8 in particular. And um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much, pretty much
pretty much a summary there. I don't know, Ms. Williams, uh, anything you'd like to add? Okay, thank you, Mr. Ross. We will move on to our finance committee report. Reverend Matias. Hey, good evening, everyone. We met uh, September 7th and uh, pretty much a straightforward um, update. There are some uh, amendment items that uh, I'm sure that Larry will speak about tonight. But uh, other than that, really um, pretty much on target with uh, our budgeting. Okay, thank you, Reverend Matias. Legislative Committee, Dr. Baker. You know, uh, the committee met on Friday, uh, a week early, due to a uh, policy that we're going to be voting on, or a position that we're going to vote on later tonight about um, requesting some legislative support for flexibility for uh, what counts as uh, being in the school, especially during any outbreaks that might cause um, a need to go to distance learning. Um, we'll discuss that further later. Um, uh, we um, we also discussed um, we we planned uh, in our discussion of what our leg a full legislative platform will look like, and we'll be discussing that later this fall. And had a really good conversation about how the board as a whole can uh, encourage legislative action that may not seem directly related to K-12 issues, but are related to other issues that we care about in terms of. Um, inequities um, that may be on the horizon. So, uh, and we'll, we'll discuss that also um, as a full board later this fall as to how we can make sure that our values are reflected in uh, a broader way. Um, Ms. Williams, Ms. Lewis, anything else to add to that? Okay, and I'm sure we'll, we'll be discussing the uh, position on um, flexibility uh, in a moment. Great, thank you, Dr. Baker. We'll move on to our superintendent's report, Dr. Roby. Good evening, everyone. So we are at um, day number eight, I think, of our school year, and it has been a phenomenal opening of the 21-22 school year. Huge success. We're very excited um, to have kids back in person. Families are glad to be back in person. Kids are glad to be back in person. We had the opportunity to visit many classrooms. I know many of you um, joined us on the opening days of school to visit and welcome mm -hmm. folks back. It was just overall just phenomenal. And our attendance and enrollment is up, so we're always excited about that. Even from Thursday of this past week till Monday, we have 88 more students. So, I'm sorry, Thursday to Tuesday, because today's Tuesday. I get, whenever there's a holiday, I always get myself kind of jammed up that way. So that's exciting over the last couple of days just to see that increase with um, our students, and we hope to continue to see that climb. Um, just a quick reminder uh, related to something that we said that we would do to review our looking at our mask, um, we said by September 20th, but since that time when we made that announcement, there has been an order from the Kent County Health Department um, throughout our county saying that everyone has to wear masks indoor in public places um, for schools, and this has been extended to all district schools, indoor spaces until 60, to 60 days after a vaccine has been made available for our pre-K through sixth grade um, students or until the infection rate drops to the low risk category for seven consecutive days in the county. And so that was something that I wanted to make sure because we said we would make an announcement by September 20th. So we just wanna reiterate that. Um, and again, the, the work that we are doing with curriculum this year. We're excited about just sharing that information. At our next board meeting, we will be sharing our um, a, a deep dive around our ESSER dollars of how we're using curriculum and instruction, what we're using that for, and then also for our social emotional learning. Um, I know that both Dr. Gorman and Mr. Atkins are working on a presentation to share with the board and also the community as promised. Um, and that concludes my announcements or my um, report this evening. All right, thank you, Dr. Roby. We have four action items this evening. First is our purchasing agenda. Uh, are there any questions or discussion on the purchasing agenda? Hearing none, may I have a motion for approval, please? So moved. Ms. Lewis, please call the roll. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Davis is excused. Dr. Flores? Yes. 
Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Lewis, yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Chucky? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have a purchasing agenda addendum. Any questions or discussion on the addendum? Okay, so this none. is an item that came up after the finance meeting. Is that correct? Happy to bring forward Mr. Oberst. For... Or these are items, I should say. Thank you. Uh, yes, good evening, uh, President Schatke and Superintendent Roby and board members. Uh, yes, Dr. Baker, um, we knew at the time of the Finance Committee, I think I mentioned that, that we were in the process of evaluating the bids on the um, general contractor for the Central Innova Innovation Central High. So that's part of it. And since that time, a few other items came up with respect to um, uh, tier two and tier three items that we need to get into the classrooms immediately, uh, ESSER spending, and so that are, those are also on the addendum before you tonight. So, and, and these items with ESSER money, and again, as, as Dr. Obi just mentioned, you'll get more information on that in a couple of weeks, but um, those ESSER sp uh, spends were on the initial investment list that you all reviewed. Uh, Gosh, back in July now, I guess it was, so. Okay, yeah. Great, thank you, Mr. Obama. Yes. All right, may I please have a motion for approval of the purchasing agenda addendum? So moved. For Ms. Lewis, please call the roll. <clears throat> Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Davis excused, Dr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Lewis, yes. Rabbi Matias? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Shaki? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Our next action item is our position on the pandemic learning flexibility for schools. Uh, Dr. Baker, you want to give us some context and welcome forward? Yeah, actually, Mr. I think Helmholtz. I'd like to ask. Of course. Mr. Helmholtz, come up and make sure uh, he gives it specifics. Um, it is on our packet, but sure. <clears throat> Thank you, President Shockey, uh, Dr. Roby, members of the board. Uh, so the position before you today is, is uh, united with the West Michigan Talent Triangle and the other superintendents where we're starting to experience uh, situations where classrooms are being quarantined, schools, whole schools in other parts of, the, of West Michigan. And right now, under we, we no longer have the same flexibility that was afforded to us when we were 100% remote and under executive order that granted waivers for seat time. You know, there we have a 75% attendance. You have 1,098 instructional hours, 180 instructional days. So there are items within the laws that limit our ability to be able to provide remote options. And so knowing that we're, you know, we're going into obviously the fall now, we're starting to see the cold and flu kind of pick up a little bit, which show the very similar symptoms to COVID-19. We are seeking um, legislative relief to provide for that maximum flexibility, whether it's legislative or executive. We just know that there may be instances where depending on the quarantine and the close contact and that time period, uh, right now, the, the, the quarantine is a minimum of 10 days, but it could be up to 20 days depending on the situation and the household. So as we look at that traditionally, uh, if a student is sick, we make sure the teachers are providing that information. We have the learning management systems that were secured as part of uh, our, our response to COVID-19 over a year ago. So we have some systems in place. We just will need the legislative or executive relief to be able to provide that. Uh, your approval of this position today simply gives uh, Rusty, Chris, myself, the ability to begin really actively advocating for these legislative changes. Yes, and as we discussed, so there are schools, I know of one in, at least in Lake County that has already had to, had to miss school days because of um, potential quarantines or fears. So, you know, this, you know, it's, 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 it wasn't even September at the time. So. Uh, certainly important and part of the issue was was whether or not um, was how to hold school districts accountable for providing instruction and you know I think that what's been it's what's also important with this is that we're 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 representing the fact that we have accountability systems in place to teach 
that even if we need to move to remote instruction. And so that we're asking for that flexibility to, to hold ourselves accountable as well. Any discussion? I, I guess I have a question. Are we differentiating between the common cold and uh, positive for COVID or how are we distinguishing when we're quarantining and a parent says, my kid has 98 point or 102 fever. Are we, how are we distinguishing so in, between some uh, of that? As you know, we published our, our COVID-19 parent handbook. Right. Uh, in there, it has step-by-step -step instructions specifically what to do. And we resent a communication out just last week and it's hitting mailboxes, the, the, the printed and mailed version today, reiterating our expectations that if a student is showing symptoms, one or more symptoms of COVID-19, they should stay home. They should notify the school uh, if, and, and contact the school nurse. If there's an, if the, in many cases, the individual may not have COVID-19, but they need to get tested and they need to follow the instructions of the school nurse as it relates to any close contact and quarantine. Uh, they should also contact their school nurse if they have those symptoms, share what that is with the school nurse, and they'll determine whether or not the student should continue to stay home and what those next steps would be. Obviously, our goal, we want kids in class, on time, ready to learn every day. But in light of the Delta variant, in light of the CDC, the state health and the county health guidance specific to what to do if there are COVID symptoms, there's a step-by-step -step action on how to do that. And that uh, parent handbook, which is final, being finalized translation right now, is on our website under the, the COVID-19 resources. Great. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, uh, may I request please a, a motion for approval of this position on pandemic learning flexibility for schools? So moved. Support. Ms. Lewis, please call the roll. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Davis excused. Dr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Shockey? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, next we need to certify delegates for the Michigan Association of School Boards or MASB Delegate Assembly on November 11th of this year. Uh, for a bit of background, MASB's 2021 Delegate Assembly will take place Thursday, November 11 at 6 p.m. at the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel in Grand Rapids. Delegates are selected by boards of education across the state. Those delegates decide MASB's positions on a wide variety of issues affecting education. All delegates and alternate, alternates, excuse me, must be school board members. Uh, only delegates and alternates named by the board may offer motions or vote on issues. However, all school board members may speak on issues and participate in the debate. The maximum number for our district for Grand Rapids Public Schools is four delegates. So uh, we need to discuss availability and interest. Uh, again, up to four of us can serve as delegates. And that date again is Thursday, November 11 at 6 p.m. Very good, Kathy has expressed her interest. Ms. Lewis, excuse me, uh, anyone else? I will as well. Governor Matias, thank you. Dr. Flores, this time you will not get into a big storm. <laughs> yeah, that's right, a lot remember easier. that? A lot easier, yeah. family. I'll, 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 I'll okay. here. Yeah, yeah, very good, thank you. No problem. All right, one more seat if anyone's interested. I'm reading Dr. Baker's face under the under the. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so much excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us just have to, you know, just go, just do That's it. Right. You know, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm hearing three interested. So um, I will ask for a motion to approve Miss Lewis, Reverend Matias, and Dr. Flores as the delegates for Grand Rapids Public Schools for the MASB Delegate Assembly. Jen, Ms. Grant, you too? Okay. We'll All right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Those fingers were pointing back to me. <laughs> uh, we appreciate your service, absolutely. Okay, great. So that motion includes now four board members, Ms. Lewis, Reverend Matias, Dr. Flores, and Ms. Grant. May I have that motion for approval, please? Motion to approve the slate for the MASB delegates. Support. Ms. Lewis, please call the roll. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Baker? Enthusiastically, yes. <laughs> Ms. Davis is excused. Dr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. 
Ms. Lewis, yes. Reverend Matias. Claro. <laughs> Mr. Ross. Yes. Yes. President Shackey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Next is our consent agenda grouping. Is there any discussion or are there any questions? If not, may I have a motion for approval? So move. Support. Ms. Lewis, please call the roll. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Davis, excuse. Dr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Grant? Yes. Ms. Lewis, yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Shaki? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, I just have one discussion item this evening, and that is that we are going to cancel the September work session. So next week, Monday, we had intended on bringing forth the compensation study, uh, but we've uh, had a request for a little more time on that. So we're going to move forward that item to October. So um, next week, Monday will be canceled. Okay, we will move on to the public comment portion of our board meeting. And I see that we have two this evening. Uh, Ms. Lewis will read instructions on public comment and then we'll invite you forward. If there is anyone present who is interested in giving public comment, there are two public comment sections on our agenda. The first one is public comment for board agenda items. Agendas are located at the, by the comment card, and the second opportunity is for commenting on non-agenda items. Please also read through our policy listed on the reverse side of the card for protocol. Please submit your card in the public comment bin, and our board assistant will collect them and bring them to my desk. Individuals be, will be called to the speaker table one at a time to address the board during the subsequent public comment time. Public comment is limited to three minutes per person. You will need to state your full name before providing your comment. We will then start the timer at the beginning of your public comment and provide you with a one minute notice indicating one minute remains. You will need to complete your comment time upon being notified that three minutes have passed. Board members do not respond to public comment. Concerns will be brought to the attention of the appropriate staff. We value your input and thank you for sharing with us. All right, thank you, Ms. Lewis. All right, it is my pleasure to welcome forward Angela Schmidt. Good evening, welcome. Hi. <coughs> Thank you, President Schottke and Dr. Roby and the rest of the board. Uh, my name is Angela Schmidt. I am here on behalf of City High Middle School PTSA. I'll be reading a statement that we've prepared. Uh, dear Superintendent Roby and members of the board, the recently published GRPS calendar of events has made us aware that all GRPS graduation ceremonies are scheduled to take place at Kelvin University during the week of May 16th, 2022. Although we're confident that you have good reasons for this deci decision, we, the City High Middle School PTSA, are writing to express our disagreement with the date and location. We are also demonstrating our support of a student-led petition that I believe has already been submitted to you um, regarding the same matter. As advocates for all graduating students, we hold this is not the environment for a high school commencement. Regarding the date of the ceremonies for City High School specifically, the week of May 16th, 2022 is the International Baccalaureate Exams, which is scheduled by the IB World Organization. That's likely come to your attention already and we look forward to a resolution on that. In terms of the location, many students and families are concerned that Calvin University feels unwelcoming to some in our community. Among issues cited were Kelvin's treatment of two former black professors concerning issues of tenure and personal worship choice. And the student petition details concerns for the LGBTQIA community by stating, in March of this year, Lindsay Owens, a queer Kelvin student, published an article detailing the unwelcoming environment that they experienced One during minute. their time at school saying, I felt the need to conceal my own queer identity, and during my time here, I've seen a range of Kelvin-sponsored and non-Kelvin-sponsored events and actions that have perpetuate, perpetrated the harm and oppression of LGBTQ individuals. 
Although we recognize Kelvin has publicly tried to make the campus more hospitable to members of the LGBTQ community, we note the Christian Reformed Church continues to describe sex outside of a heterosexual marriage as a sin. The city PTSA also considers holding the ceremonies outside of GRPS district, um, creates equity issues for family who may rely on public transportation or do not drive or own vehicles. There is a bus route to Kelvin, but that could be a very long ride from the west side. With regard to Fountain Street Church, this has been a decades long tradition for City High School with um, just a few except. Sorry. Yeah, you can finish your sentence, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's only been a few exceptions um, uh, due to COVID for the last couple of years. So. Wonderful. All right. Thank you very much for your comment this evening. All right, next, a welcome forward, uh, Summer Wright and Torin Hodgman. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having us. It's great to be here. My family has been in GRPS for almost eight years now. We started at Coit, actually, just before Dr. McGee got there. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. My, po my comments won't be as polished. I just learned tonight of um, the proposed graduation of Kelvin for students at Grand Rapids Public Museum High School, which my oldest, Torin, is a part of. We hold the same concerns that you've heard from City tonight. Kelvin is a surprising choice given how Grand Rapids Public has such a deep and amazing commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Kelvin is not a welcoming place for many people, including the LGBTQ community of which my entire family is a part of. My partner, Anna, and I are very pleased to be as part of Grand Rapids Public because of that commitment, and Torn as part of the community as well, and absolutely feels very uncomfortable with Calvin. Yeah. Um, speaking with a bunch of my peers at Museum High School, we were in a little bit shocked that Calvin was the choice because our um, community. We've cultivated a welcoming, accepting, and safe space for everybody who comes to our building. And so learning about Calvin, that doesn't match with what we believe. And that would be not the best fit for us to leave just because it was not the same for us. It's going against what we have cultivated for the past seven years now. <laughs> We are so grateful to GRPS. We love the school. All three of our kids are part of GRPS. And we really, I, I moved here in 2014 and wasn't intending to stay. That was the year of the polar vortex. And uh, Grand Rapids Public sucked me in. Programs are amazing. So we want to continue to support GRPS. And we're here to try and understand how we can help have a conversation about this decision making process and perhaps have alternatives to such an unwelcoming place for our students. Okay, thank you very much for your comments this evening. That concludes our public comment period. So we will move forward to our superintendent's comments. Dr. Robin. We have three additional leaders that we did not have an opportunity to introduce. And so I'd like to invite Tara Uday to stand. She is the new principal of Coit that you just decided on this evening. And her executive director is Mr. Beresford. So welcome, Tara. Jennifer Rodas, and if I pronounce that correctly. Yeah, Rodas. Rodas, okay. She is our new AP at Burton Middle School, and her executive director is Dr. Carl Nelson. Welcome. <laughs> and Nanette Herzberger, who is the new, new AP at CA Frost. Welcome, to, and her executive director is Matthew Beresford, so welcome, Nanette. And similarly, we expect just great things from your leadership and are welcoming you to our admin team. So thank you for, for joining us and we look forward to just a really great school year. Wonderful, thank you very much. We will move on to our board member comments. Dr. Baker, I'll start with you this evening. All right, thanks. Well, it's great to see uh, these new administrators and it's so 
cool to have been around for a while. And you know, I remember Jerry when he's at the Hispanic Center before you even started. So it's really great to see the growth. And uh, I know one of you well because my sp son spent so much time in your office, uh, Mr. McGee. <laughs> so um, he's doing well. Um, so anyway, it's really great to see this. I, I really feel uh, the, uh, uh, I like the new blood. I'll just say that. Um, I also really appreciated uh, Mike Gunnell's discussion of the Hispanic heritage. And I think as we've been discussing, our people are talking to us about how we teach about race. Um, I think that that reflects the direction that we are heading, been heading. Um, you know, Hispanic Heritage Month is not new to Grand Apple's Public Schools, but really just teaching about the language, culture, history of Americans is what uh, the Hispanic Heritage Month is and has been. And, uh, you know, and I also want to say that um, I've appreciated Academic Achievement Committee. Um, we've discussed new curriculums that also seek to make sure that we're expressing the diversity of who we are as a community. And so I really appreciate that and really see that as what's important about what we teach um, instead of the labels that get attached to it. Thank you, Dr. Baker. Reverend Matias. Yeah, it was, uh, it was exciting to be invited to the school openings. I, I had the privilege of attending about five of the schools and just the diversity of our schools, the emphasis of it uh, was really exciting. I could see in the administration uh, an eagerness. Uh, the kids themselves were really excited to see each other uh, at Union High School. I mean, you could, you could sense in the student the excitement about being in school again. So that was really a privilege. It is good to be able to, um, to be acknowledged as having contributed to this country, certainly being from Puerto Rico. Uh, my direct family has served uh, in the armed forces and, and, and those kinds of things. And so to not only be able to talk about the history, but then see ourselves in that, having made this country is really critical for us. So I'm, I'm glad that we're continuing that kind of tradition here. That's it. Thank you, Reverend Matias. Mrs. Williams. Well, I'd like to start by congratulating the football teams from Union and Ottawa Hills High Schools for an awesome um, display of sportsmanship at the uh, Crosstown Throwdown. It was an amazing night. Um, and thank the staff and the GR um, PS Foundation for their dedication in putting that event together. I'd like to thank um, Mill Atkins and the principals and staff from MLK and Brookside for welcoming me on the first day of school um, to view those uh, schools and uh, see how our kiddos are adjusting um, already. And then lastly, I'd like to congratulate uh, Mr. Shahari Horton on being nominated Grand Rapids Player of the Week and ask everyone to go to MLive and vote for him. He's currently in second place. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Perfect. Mr. Ross. No comment. Right. Dr. Flores. Well, I'll probably be a little bit long-winded and maybe take some of your time. <laughs> um, uh, you know, several things. Uh, one. Congratulations to the, to the leadership that is presented tonight. And most of you had a, a quality that I really appreciate as a former teacher in Grand Rapids Public Schools where I served my career. Um, and the teaching is, is the perspective that is needed to, I think, connect with our children and you have to reach them to teach them. And then secondly, you know, Dr. Baker talked about the Hispanic uh, Heritage Month and, and uh, my Puerto Rican colleague here, uh, Mr. Matias. Um, touched on, on uh, the Puerto Ricans. I, I love history. I was a history teacher for the school system here and also an administrator for, for several years. And Hispanic American Heritage Month represents the history of Americans. And we were born here. Many of us, in fact, didn't come here from another country. The United States through manifest destiny took one half of Mexico and made it America. And the Puerto Ricans, you know, the same thing. Uh, manifest destiny and imperialism. We, we conquered, uh, or we had a war with Spain, and we wound up with, with Florida and, and uh, the South and, and with Puerto Rico and many of our other possessions. So what we have to do, I think, is embrace the fact that we have to teach our children to be proud of 
their participation, their development, their contribution, their participation in wars to defend this country, including the Revolutionary War for Independence. And we need to, I think, like years back when I was a teacher, we had a little packet of how to, how to celebrate Hispanic American heritage. You know, if you look at other parts of the country where there's a large critical mass of Hispanics, like there are here in Grand Rapids now, Hispanic Americans, well, we're at 39%, John. You know, we have become a critical mass that without success in educating these children, it reflects on all of us. So we have to find ways to connect with them and to bring them into the schools and make them feel like they're a part of this, this, this system. In other parts of the country, they, they take their music, their band, they have marching band with a mariachi group. They have a, in music, a marimba, a salsa. In dance, they have a salsa group. They have the regional Norteño, um, uh, Mexican-American focused dancing. They have a lot of things that reflect the people in our community. We're indigenous, we're native. Now we have a great big population of Guatemalan and now Hondurans and others that are coming here. And we need to make sure that we're not stereotyping the children that are, that are coming. We're not all in this caravan coming. And there's nothing wrong with the people that are coming. They're seeking asylum. But we're Americans. And we defended the country. We need to make sure that our messaging is, is proper. And we need to find ways to bring magnets to our children that they feel a part of. So I'd like to just encourage you to continue to celebrate in that, <clears throat> in that uh, spirit uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Flores. Ms. Grant. Um, I would just like to congratulate all of the administrators who have new positions, and thank you guys for being with the district. We know that we're coming off of a very difficult year, and that as we all come back together, that we'll have new challenges, but thank you for taking on that work and being here for the students. I really appreciate it, and I know the full board does as well. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Ms. Lewis. Yes, I'd like to echo what Ms. Grant just said about the new folks and welcome you and uh, those of you who aren't so new but just new to jobs for uh, physicians. We're very happy to have you. I also want to thank Dr. Roby for encouraging us to get out there and um, welcome kids back to school on the first day of school. And I had the pleasure of visiting Aberdeen and Campus Elementary as well as Harrison Park. And uh, it was um, really a nice experience uh, getting into the buildings and meeting the principals and seeing the kids. And so I thank you, Dr. Ruby, for including us in that. Great, thank you. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll say many of the same things, but uh, they're worth repeating. So I too had the opportunity to visit schools and welcome students and, and some of you too that I had the pleasure of uh, meeting and seeing that day. I personally have been reflecting a lot on this word trustee you know, we are trustees of uh, the Board of Education and how important that word trust is. And I hope uh, to all of you that you will feel that trust in us and our genuine care and compassion for your success and the success of these beautiful, wonderful, amazing children who we believe, truly believe, all of them have the inherent ability to um, have success in the school district and move on to meaningful uh, lives in our communities. And so um, I come to you just with extraordinary gratitude for your commitment to each other, your peers, to our children, to our families, and to, to this community. So thank you very, very much. With that, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you for being here tonight. <clears throat>